In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. A very joyous and blessed Pentecost Day to all of you. This is one of the most joyous days in the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Everything is renewed, which is why the church is bedecked in green today, the color of life and newness. A few years ago, I preached on what is the coming of the Holy Spirit. That word spirit in Greek is pnevma. And what I said to you then was it doesn't mean a breeze or just a little breath. It means a mighty wind. If there was a word in ancient Greek that could mean hurricane force wind, it would be pnevma. That's what comes to the church today. Not just a nice refreshing breeze, but the power of God given to us in His Holy Spirit. And the power of that Holy Spirit remains just as powerful today on this celebration of Pentecost as it was on the first one. Despite what anyone thinks, us or anyone else, the Christian church remains the beacon of hope in this world. It remains the light of the world. We heard Christ tell us in today's gospel that He is the light of the world. And because He is manifested in His church by the presence of His Spirit, the church remains the light of the world. This despite 2,000 years of all kinds of things. We had hundreds of years of persecution where anybody who was found to be a Christian was killed. They couldn't kill the church. In fact, the church emerged from persecution always stronger on the other end than when it went in. The church went into the persecution by the Romans. An outlaw band of people on the fringes of the Roman Empire, the most powerful empire perhaps in the history of the world. And when that persecution was ended, Within a few short wor- wor- years, the entire Roman world had become the purview of the Christian church. We Christians haven't always done the best job being Christians. And scandal has been an aspect, unfortunately and sadly, of Christian life from the beginning up until now. But despite whatever scandal, how great or small, however destructive, the source of the scandal, the church remains the light of the world. And in today's day and age, when the church faces a different enemy, indifference, this world in many ways no longer sees itself in need of a creator because it doesn't see itself as being created. And still in an age of indifference, the church remains the light of the world, whether that light is recognized or not. All because of today, because the Holy Spirit is what enlivens the church. But today is also Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of you fathers and grandfathers and godfathers, and to those of you that are or could be father figures. Today belongs to you as well. And what I want to say to you my fellow fathers, is a very simple message, but a very important one. And that is this. The same mighty wind that blew on the first day of Pentecost, that has enlivened the church from every day until now, that same Spirit of God has been breathed upon us. We fathers and godfathers and grandfathers and father figures. It's not just a matter of biology that brought us into this role. It was the power of God. And that same power of God continues to blow into us, attempting to blow through us to our children. That's what it means to be a father. It means to be one who has received the Holy Spirit and works with God in the raising of children. 
I think today is a wonderful day because the world stops to honor our fathers for all that they do. Fathers will sacrifice anything for their kids. Yesterday I was in the kitchen stirring a pot of beans that when the beans were dry it was 12 pounds of beans. It was much heavier when they were wet and it would become mush of refried beans and I was stirring. Father Elias came in the kitchen and said, can I help you? I said, yeah, you can. Stir the beans a little bit. And he started to take a few turns and he said, fathers will do anything for their kids. And he's right. We fathers are determined to give our kids the best that we can of their education and preparation that they would be successful in this life. And we fathers, if we only could, would take on any of the challenges and struggles that our kids have. If we could take it on for them, we would do it. And we do as much as we can. I think it's beautiful to see how fathers have become more involved in the lives of their kids in all aspects. You see TV shows from the 50s and you see fathers waiting in a waiting room or waiting at home while their wives are giving birth. Those days are gone, thankfully. And our fathers are there with their wives giving birth to their children. I was waiting in line in the drive-thru at Starbucks the other day and I see a guy get out of his pickup truck. He looked like a tough guy. Had a tough truck. And he opened the gate of that bed of that truck. He went back into the cab and he brought out a diaper bag. And right on the gate of that bu the bed of his truck, he changed a diaper. What a beautiful image of fathers involved in the raising of their kids. So it's good to honor our fathers today. We should do that. But I want to say one thing that's more important than anything I've said so far about what our fathers need to do. Fathers, the Spirit of God is blowing upon us not just to change their diapers, not just to give them a good education, not just to help them to a successful life in this life. If we were to do that and only that, what good have we done? Today in the Gospel, when the soldiers are sent to arrest Jesus, and they hear Jesus and they come back not having arrested him. They say, why didn't you arrest him? And the soldier said, no man ever spoke as this man. And so fathers, our first and foremost job of raising our kids is to raise them in the faith. That's our main job. That's the one that will last not just one lifetime, but one eternity. One lifetime that never ends. On the one hand, I know I'm preaching to the choir. You fathers are the ones that brought your kids. You're here today. I understand that. And I applaud you for it. But I have to say that if there was one thing I could change, if somebody said, Father, here's a magic wand. If you could change one thing about your parish, what would you change? And honestly, I will tell you, it's this. If I could change all of our fathers, and I include myself in this, and make us fathers, the fathers we should be, to raise our kids in the faith, that's what I would pick. Our mothers aren't perfect. Our kids aren't perfect. We're not perfect. But if I could make one change that would change many more things, that's what I would change. Because that's the power of fatherhood. If we change ourselves as we raise our kids and put the raising of them in the faith as most important, what can't we do? So you're here and I applaud you're here, but I want to encourage you. Realize that it's up to you and it's up to me to take on this important task. And we can't confine that to Sunday morning. The world our kids are growing up in is an incredibly difficult world to navigate as Christians. The world has seen outward persecution before and we came out of it just fine. We've never seen the nullification of faith as we are seeing it now. 
And so it's going to take much more than we've ever given before if we're going to raise our kids to be good Orthodox Christians. And for those of you that have already raised your kids, who are thinking, well, I did my best, good or bad, whatever it was, you're not done. Your kids, no matter how old they are, need every opportunity and every encouragement to continue to be the Christians that they've been called to be. So how do we do this? What do we fathers need to do better? I think it comes down to two things. Fathers, good fathers, are leaders. And we need to lead our children up. Lead them up. Lead them up to God. You've done it by bringing them today. Lead them up to Holy Communion. Not just today, but at every liturgy possible. I know sometimes we say, well, I can't do this, and I can't go that, I can't go to Bible study or a midweek service. I'm working. And we understand the power of that working. But I want to challenge you. Teach your kids what is more important than having a good living. It's to have a good soul. And we teach them that when the church comes first. So lead them up. Lead them up to prayer. Either as a family or at least by your example. Let them know you pray. And let them see that good example so they can imitate it. So we have to lead them up. We also have to lead them down. Down in a way that we're going to do in this particular service perhaps like no other. We have not knelt in church for almost two months. Today and for a long time we're going to kneel. Those that are physically able to are going to kneel. We're going to kneel because the Holy Spirit has come and we kneel down against the awesome power of God who comes to visit us. When you listen and pray those prayers, realize we're kneeling also down in repentance. And if there's one quality that we need to instill in our kids, especially today and in today's day and age, it's humility and repentance. So fathers, we need to lead our children down into humility, into self-denial in a world that wants to feed them, to never deny themselves. Endless supplies of whatever they want. We need to tell them the life-saving power of self-denial. Because ultimately, if we want to lead our kids up to God, the only way for us to do it is to lead them down into humility. So fathers today, let's celebrate the wonderful gift God has given us. Not just the families that honor us today, but the gift to be fathers. Let's realize that in all of our weakness and in all of our failings, it's not just up to us. The Holy Spirit, that mighty wind of God is blowing to us and through us to do this mighty task. Let's open to the strength that comes from Him. And in all the important jobs that we do, from the ones we get paid for and the ones that we don't, let's realize there is one most important job. And that is doing everything within our power to raise our kids in the faith. Yes, we want them to have success in this life. But immeasurably more important is it to lead them into success in the next. That next life which is eternal and continues forever in the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.